QLC plus the fixture editor and we're in particular we're dealing with the aliases tab here. So what we have here is a light where one of the channels on the light actually affects what happens on an, one of the other channels on the light. So depending upon how you set this particular channel on the light, it affects what's going to happen on the other light channel. So I made up kind of an example here. And here's our uh, speed sound select channel. I'll just bring this up. And this is the channel that's going to affect the other macro channel. So when we're running in 0 to 127, it's going to act as a speed controller. And it's going to act as a speed controller for these color macros here. So we have off, red flash, red pulse, green flash, green pulse, blue flash, blue pulse, uh, red, green, blue flash, red, green, blue pulse. So it acts as the speed controller for there. So you could set your speed anywhere from 0 to 127 and then choose your color macro and it would run that particular color pattern. When you go above 127 to 128, it now becomes a sound sensitivity control. It controls the amount of sound sensitivity, but it also changes what the macros are actually doing. It now switches over to a different set of macros, and it's like a sound macro. So now, it's uh, if you choose this, it's going to do a red flash, green flash, blue flash, pink, aqua, orange, yellow, RGB. So basically what you're doing is you're changing the descriptors for this particular channel. It would be the same channel on the light, whether it's a color, whether it's running color macros or sound macros depends upon how you have this channel set. If this channel set to 0 to 127, it's running color macros. If it's set from 128 to 255, it's running sound macros. So how do you get the different descriptions to come up properly? And that's basically what this is so that when you're in QLC Plus and you click on something, you want to see the proper description so that you know what's happening. So what we do here, we're in the speed sound select. And I'm just going to highlight this one. And notice it says custom down here. When I select sound sensitivity, I want to label this as an alias. So I'm basically telling QLC, when I switch to this particular range, I want this to affect the set of descriptors for one of my other channels. So it actually changes the descriptors. It could actually change the ranges for me also. So what you do when you select this, to go to this drop down menu and select alias. And it'll display alias down here and say OK. So now when we go to 128 on here, it's going to signal QLC to go to the alias descriptions of that particular channel. And now here's how you set that up. Let's go, let's go to modes. Um, in my particular light here, the fictitious, this is going to be a four channel mode. I'm going to set up here four channel mode. In this particular mode, I'm just going to have pan, tilt, my speed sound selector, and then my color macros, um, which is the default when it's set from 0 to 127, it's running the color macros. So that's the one I want to choose. It's my default setting there. And say OK. Now I'm going to fix this here. Make sure that's running pan. Make sure this is running tilt. Make sure this is running the speed sound select. And this is running my color macros and say OK. Now when I go over to my aliases, I will see that I have one alias defined here. It is my speed sound select sensitivity that it goes from 128 to 255. So QLC is recognizing that when I'm in this range, it's going to change the descriptors. This happens in four channel mode. I would like to replace the color macro descriptors with the sound macro descriptors. So that's all we're doing. We're replacing the color macro descriptors with the sound macro descriptors and they'll say add this to this. So basically I'm saying when I'm in this range with this particular alias, it's going to change my color macro descriptors over so they're going to become sound descriptors. And then make sure you save this. So now let's go into QLC and see what we have here. I'll open this up quickly. I'm just going to do the one fixture. So I'm going to add the fixture. Um, don't laugh. I call this uh, Lights R Us. And it's my Ultra LED. And I'm going to be in four channel mode because that's where this works. So pan, tilt, speed, sound, adjust, and color macros. Okay, and I just patched one of them in to show you very quickly. 
I'm going to go over my functions menu. I'm going to add a function. I want to use the ultra LED to create that function. Activate the channels. Now here's where you can see the change. When I'm in speed, slow to fast, look at my macros. Red flash, red pulse, green flash, green pulse, blue flash, blue pulse, RGB flash, RGB pulse. When I go above this into my sound sensitivity, watch how these descriptors change. So that's what you've done with the alias. You've gone in and you've, it's now picking up. You're basically told that once I go into the sound range, sound sensitivity range, which I labeled as an alias, it's now going to replace these descriptors with the sound descriptors. And you can actually change the ranges on there. So basically that's what you're doing with the alias. It's just, it's just helping you. When I'm in the speed range down here, now my descriptors are showing the speed definitions on them. When I'm in the sound sensitivity range, now my descriptors are showing me my sound descriptors or sound capabilities that I'm doing, okay? So very kind of an unusual circumstance. I have not seen a light like this personally, but I guess it's possible and um, that's how you would set that up.